today we're going to be talking about one of our flagship treks, the Rupin Pass trek. Now, a lot of us already know about Rupin Pass. It's a much loved trek, and the founder of India Hikes, Arjun Majumdar, explored it more than 10 years ago, much before the birth of India Hikes. Now, we're going to dive into the tiny details of Rupin Pass. So, if you're going on this Rupin Pass trek, especially, you should watch out for these details. I have uh, the founder of India Hikes, Arjun Majumdar, with me talking about his experience from so many times of doing the Rupin Pass trek and taking us into those tiny details. So, let's hear it from him. So Arjun, you hold the Rupin Pass Trek very close to your heart um, and one of the reasons is that you did it long before India Hikes was born and it was also the second trek India Hikes brought out. But you made a statement that caught everyone's uh, attention. You said that the Rupin Pass Trek is full of surprises. So can you tell us what are these surprises that actually struck you on the trek? See, when we started on the Rupin Pass Trek, I didn't think there would be this many surprises. Because I've done a lot of treks and you know every trek has this have their sections you know you start in one section you move on to say from the villages to the forest to the grasslands but Rupin Pass took me entirely by surprise because right from day one till the time you end the trek has some surprise or the other waiting for you so much so that when you're on the trek you just want to see what's next. <laughs> So, uh, if I have to ask you, what are two of the biggest surprises that trekkers must not miss, uh, come what may? You have put me in a tough spot, uh, Swati, <laughs> because I think I think Rupin has a lot more than two. But um, one of them actually really caught me by very big surprise. I remember there's this uh, village on the trek, it's called Jhaka, and then you cross that village, and I think about an hour, hour and a half outside the village. Uh, you are happily trekking over a very high uh, kind of a V-shaped, deep V-shaped valley at right at the bottom it's Rupin is flowing maybe a couple of thousand feet um, below and you are right above. You can hear the sound of the river and you are on kind of an overhanging and then suddenly out of nowhere you enter a cedar forest. These huge coniferous trees, so huge, they go right up to the sky. I mean, you, it's deep and dark and if in, even if you look up, you're going to crane, you're going to crack your neck. You can't see it. You can't see the sky. It's deep, dark, that kind of a cedar forest and it's absolutely sudden. In fact, once, just to test my theory whether it's really that sudden, I stood on the edge, I spread my arm out and one hand was inside the forest and the other was outside. It's that sudden, it's like someone has opened a gate. My God. And then you enter this forest, the smell of the coniferous trees envelops you and you're in this, walking on this you know, lovely shady trail and then maybe about half an hour, 40 minutes later, abruptly, again as abruptly as it started, the forest ends. Wow. And then it does just doesn't end. Because right there, on the edge of the forest, below you, and not above you, not along you, but below you, mm. is the, one of the biggest snow bridges you'll ever see in your life. Wow. Okay. You don't expect snow bridges in the middle of the forest. Mm. And not, it's not a small snow bridge, it's easily half a kilometer long, maybe more. And you have to actually go down to the snow bridge mm. from the edge of the forest where you're standing. Rupin Pass, I think, has lots of snow bridges, but uh, I don't think trekkers understand the specialty of, you know, seeing these snow bridges and walking on them. So can you tell us why snow bridges are special and especially on this trek? You know, Swati, Rupin Pass is perhaps the only trek in our country that I have done which has so many snow bridges. Mm. In fact, for a long time, I believed that this was the only trek where there were snow bridges. Okay. And I can almost tell you that trekkers will not get any trek where they are going to get snow bridges. Snow mm. bridges are nothing but natural bridges made out of snow where you can actually cross over from one side or the, uh, to the other. And this is formed over the Rupin. Mm. And I, uh, I remember at least doing it two or three times, crossing over from one side to the other and then this side to that side and that side to this side. Mm. And you do this even while climbing the famous Rupin waterfall, you actually cross a very big snow bridge and get on from the right side to the left side. So, these are fantastic experiences, climbing snow bridges. You think, you know, snow bridge this thick, at least 30-40 feet thick right. snow bridges. Almost like a glacier. Yes, absolutely. It's actually the remains of uh, glaciers and these snow bridges actually disappear. After some time, the, uh, it melts. Mm. But during the trekking season that we are in, in May and June, 
the snow bridges are intact. Maybe towards the end of June, some of them break off, but uh, trekkers have a lot of fun crossing these uh, snow bridges. And it's, a, it's a great sight to see. Okay, so talking about slightly higher up on the trek, um, I've seen pictures of Rupin Pass where there is acres and acres of snow, like lots of snow. And this is something rare uh, I haven't seen on many other treks. So, can you take us through that snow experience of uh, Rupin Pass from where you see snow and what to watch out for in these snow sections? And Rupin Pass is known for its snow fields. And that's like how you mentioned snow bridges. Even the snow fields of Rupin Pass is something spectacular because trekkers really don't uh, see snow fields. Mm -hmm. In fact, the picture that you put up on our uh, uh, website, that's a picture of the snow fields actually. Mm -hmm and vast, vast areas of snow fields, you know, which stretch out absolutely as far as the eye can see. And you're actually walking on them and approaching closer, closer to the Rupin Pass. Mm -hmm. And you only do that once you climb to a certain elevation and then you get the snow fields and it's huge. So in around May, you can expect to see a lot of yes. snow. Okay. And um, I want to ask you about the pass crossing itself. I have heard you talk about the pass crossing with a lot of, uh, um, I don't know, respect. I, I think that's the word to use. But I've seen you comparing it to other pass crossings in our country and telling me that it's up there. So tell us about that experience of the Rupin pass crossing that day, perhaps. Trekkers uh, love this pass crossing. It's one of the most adventurous pass crossings they've ever done. It's adventurous because you know what, um, leading to the Rupin Pass, see most passes that we cross in the Himalayas, you, you climb up to the pass. But Rupin Pass, you actually climb through a chute, it's a gully and then you get to the pass. So you are actually, it's a very narrow gully which leads to the pass and you have to climb through the gully on snow and then you get on the pass. Mm -hmm. Of course, this is early in the season. In other seasons, yes, there wouldn't be much uh, snow. But this gully, climbing through the gully is what makes it so adventurous. Mm -hmm. Because here is this small gully, you have to go through it. Your voice is echoing through the gully. Your, you know, your sound, whatever you say, it's reverberating through the walls, you know, uh, through the gully. Mm -hmm. And you know you're on to a very high adventure. And, uh, you know, heart is pumping hard because you, you are climbing. It feels like you're on an expedition. And then is when you actually get on the pass. And then you get on the pass and that view totally changes on the other side. Mm. It's fantastic. You know you're at 15,000 odd feet and you've done this adventurous uh, gully, you know, this thing. Mm. It's almost, it takes you to those Everest expeditions and all those expeditions where you have to cut through a gully to go to a place. It's just like that. So you experience all these snow fields, the gully, the pass crossing and the other side all in one day, right? Yes, that's true. Wow. That sounds like an entire trek packed into one day. It is. So um, I want to ask you some uh, intricate details of these treks now. Um, the upper waterfall campsite. Um, this is a place uh, at the top of a waterfall and earlier nobody used to camp there. But I think once uh, India hikes, recognized it as a campsite or identified it to be a good campsite and set it up and it's such a fantastic campsite that a lot of people camp there now. I want to ask you what made you imagine that we could have a campsite on top of a waterfall? There were two reasons Swati. One was a very practical reason and another was of course the beauty of this place. But I'll tell you about the practical reasons. When we first used to do the Rupin Pass trek, we used to camp at the lower waterfall and then climb all the way to the Rupin Pass, cross over to the other side, cross the snow section, the ice sections and cross the grasslands and actually go down to the villages which are there. So this was one big trek, mm -hmm. which was easily a 13-14 hour trek. Mm -hmm. But most trekkers are unable to push that long mm -hmm. and they find it extremely grueling. Mm -hmm. That's one. We also noticed that this long push also leads to a lot of altitude sickness because you're starting somewhere around 11,000 feet, climbing to 15,000 feet, getting down to again 3 4,000 feet. So the chances of altitude sickness are very high. People needed one more camp for acclimatization. Mm -hmm. So that's where we thought the best in-between place would be a place which is, it gives you about another 2,000 feet of altitude. Mm -hmm. A beautiful campsite like the upper waterfall is because you know it's surrounded by this uh, it's like a 273 deg uh, degree surrounded by um, 
it's a it's a it's a amphitheater it's a cauldron you are in the middle of it mm. and that makes that setting so beautiful and the rupin is just you know emerging out of that place and it's gently flowing and uh, kind of funneling into the snout of the rupin waterfall so it's a one of the most spectacular alpine camps if you want to have that is the upper waterfall so this actually brings me to uh, something you just brought up which is the rupin river itself um you mentioned that at the upper waterfall camp you actually see it emerging and then it uh, it's quite gentle on top then it suddenly flows down as a waterfall but uh, we don't ever see the rupin river at all after uh, crossing the upper waterfall like when we go to the snow fields or to the gully so where does this river disappear to or in fact where does it originate from because we don't see any of that Oh, it's just that it goes under the snow fields. Is where you don't uh, recognize it. The rupin actually is moves along with you, and the true origin of the river is actually a small kind of a puddle just below the pass. Seriously? Yes, it's just below the pass. It's a small watery spot. That's where the rupin actually originates. It's a small stream, not more than maybe two or three feet wide, which actually goes along with you. It's sometimes way outside your trail, or it's quite far from your trail, maybe three hundred, four hundred meters, which is why you don't see it. It's not right next to you, mm. but that's where it starts, and then eventually at the upper waterfall is where it. All the other streams from the snow-fed, uh, uh, you know, snow patches, it becomes immediately larger. Mm. So that's where it becomes. It takes the volume. Okay, it's hard to imagine that such a small puddle can give rise to such a big river, which flows down far away. Uh, that brings me to my next question. Actually, um, there's this—I um, don't know if it's a myth, but um, they say that if you stand at the pass, the melt water from the pass, uh, one side of it actually goes into the Bay of Bengal, and the other side goes into the Arabian Sea. Now, is this a myth or is it actually true? Actually, Swati, mm -hmm. um, the Rupin Pass is a knife edge pass. You know, you stand on that. If you put one foot on this side of the pass, on the and on the other foot on the other side, the snow melt from your left shoe is going to go all the way down to Pakistan, and the snow melt from under your right shoe is going to go all the way to Bangladesh. Wow. And it's it's like this: the the snow melt from your left shoe. It will melt down. It will go down into the Ronti Gard. From Ronti Gard, it will go down to the Baspa River. The Baspa to the Sutlej, Sutlej to the Indus, Indus to Pakistan. Okay. And on the right side, your snow melt will go down to the Rupin. The Rupin will go down to the Tons. The Tons to the Yamuna. Yamuna to the Ganga, and the Ganga to Bangladesh. My God. That's how it's actually like that. And to think you're actually going to kind of the source of this river. So nice. Now coming to the pass, uh, I want to ask you about the views from the pass because what you've seen on this side is extremely different from what you see on that side. So can you tell us a little bit about the views that you see from the pass and while trekking down from the pass? See, when you get on the pass, the first thing that strikes you is that big, vast valley on the other side. It's snow, snow, snow for quite a while, and then the green. You know, you can see the green melting into the snow. It's not the snow which melts into the green. You know, it's the green climbs into the snow, and vast grasslands on the other side. The big Kinnauri snow ranges, you know, which are right in front of your eyes. You see, you see them, and that's the scene that you see. And you know, you're just waiting to get down on the other side to see what is there. Mm -hmm. So there's actually a big belief that uh, you see Kinnaur Kailash on the other side of the pass. Is that true? It isn't. You don't see the Kinnaur Kailash. Uh, Uh, range, but what you see are uh, there's a very big mountain there. See, Kinnaur is known for big mountains in Himachal Pradesh. Not many people know that, but some of the biggest mountains of Himachal Pradesh, the highest mountains of Kin Himachal Pradesh, are in Kinnaur. And one of them, uh, the the John uh, John Kandan, you get to see it from the Rupin Pass. Just you climb the Rupin Pass. That's one of the big prominent uh, summits. And the the Jorkanden summit it's around twenty one thousand plus uh, feet uh, summit, but that's on the edges of the Kinnar Kala. So Kinnar Kala is even beyond that. So you don't really see the Kinnar Kala range massive uh, that you see, but the closest you see would be this big summit, and of course the other big summits. They're right above the Sangla town, so that uh, really makes it very magnificent. Okay, and on the other side of the pass, I think there's just one day of uh, descent where you head down to Rontigarh and then to Sangla. So, what are a couple of things to watch out for on this particular section? 
the pastilles especially they are known pastilles in fact shepherds from uh, this side of the pass take and the entire flock of sheep cross the rupin pass just to feed on the grasses of that place is that rich and that good the sheep come back absolutely healthy and wealthy <laughs> So it's known for its grasslands, known for its pastures, and it's long, huge pastures. I mean, it's endless. Mm. Just to trek on these pastures is what you would want to do it. And then you get down to the villages of Sanglakanda, small village right on top at the edge of the passes. Get into the forest. It's a wonderful setting, and it's the snow-clad peaks are still around you. Mm. So after all these years uh, of doing uh, Rupin Pass and running so many other treks. If I have to ask you to, uh, I don't know, put it on your list of favorites, where would you put it? Like what number? I would easily put it in my top three. Okay. Okay, that's saying a lot. My top three keeps changing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> but has it permanently been there in top three? Yes, always. Okay. Uh, well, thanks a lot, Arjun. That was a really nice chat about the Rupin Pass trek. Um, we learned a lot about different aspects of the trek, and I think our viewers will also take away a lot from this uh, conversation. So thanks a lot. Thank you, Swati, for having me. So that was Arjun Majumdar, the founder of India Hikes, talking to us about the tiniest details of Rupa Pass. I hope you made notes while sitting and listening to him, because uh, what we learned today is that Rupa Pass is really not just about the pass crossing; it is about the forests on the trail it's about the big snow bridges that you don't get to see anywhere else so join us we'll be right here all you need to do is hit subscribe and the bell icon next to it you can also follow us on social media where we're constantly sharing trail tips and trek talk we're on facebook instagram and twitter so join us there you can also write to me on tws@indiahikes.com and make sure you drop in a comment with your thoughts thank you for joining us i'm swati from india hikes and you're watching tech with swati